Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with two of the best phones on the market. We've got, of course, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 on the left, which is a 5G foldable handset, $2,000 US dollars, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra on the right, which is also a 5G handset. Now, the key difference, of course, is that the Z Fold 2 folds and has two displays. Uh, which is a novelty unto itself. So you have, in my opinion, two devices in one, still some very solid cameras on the back, and a form factor that isn't for everyone, but for me, is ideal. Uh, it is heavier than the Note 20 Ultra, uh, bulkier, but then in the same vein, uh, much easier to use single-handedly because it's not as wide. And then when you do want the wide display, all you have to do, if you don't break your phone, is open it. So I think it's a winner through and through. You've got one camera here. They did away with the notch from the previous generation. Another front-facing camera here. So no shortage of selfie options. And then three on the back. And then even if you wanted to use these for selfies, you could when the phone is opened up. So that's a whole nother option. Hardware is basically identical on these two devices. The key difference is that this guy over here um, Besides having the same processor, 5G, same amount of RAM, uh, not the same amount of internal storage, 256 gigs here, 128 here, wish Samsung had not done that. Uh, this does have pen input. This does have an IP68 rating, so it is water and dust resistant. You're going to be able to take this phone places safely that you just can't take the Z Fold 2 safely. I'm not saying you can't take it, but you will be taking it at your own risk. So those are things to bear in mind. And, you know, I did a comparison of these phones a while back, basically when the Z Fold 2 launched. And that's why I felt it was time to give you an update because, you know, I've spent enough time with both of them now to really confirm that the Z Fold 2 is the phone I prefer using. Now, I have to admit, I do have a Note 9 that I use as a house phone, even though I don't go anywhere uh, because of the pandemic. And what that means, and that hopefully will change when I can go somewhere, is that when I know that you know it's raining or uh, I'm gonna go in the pool or whatever it may be, uh, that's when the Note 9 comes out because I know I don't have to worry about what happens to it. Um, I mean, I still have to worry about it. I don't want to break it, but I mean, from an IP68 dust and waterproof resistance standpoint, I don't have to worry. So when I go anywhere that's involving, you know, rain, water, uh, dust, you know, walking a trail, hiking, anything of that nature, that's if I do it, this is not going to be the phone I take with me. And most people, you know, that's why this is a luxury device, cannot afford to have two phones just for that reason. Um, even though this is a second gen phone, I still consider it an early adopter device. The Note 20 Ultra is the opposite of that. It's not an early adopter device. It's the culmination of Samsung's entire phone business coming to life. Uh, you know, pen input, 6.9 inch, high res, high refresh display, uh, some of the best cameras in the business. You really can't go wrong with the Note 20 Ultra unless it's too big uh, or too expensive, which it is still really expensive. And that's why I bring up um, they're both expensive phones, uh, but they both, I think, have overlapping attraction for Samsung and users like myself. And, you know, if the Fold, Z Fold 2 didn't come out, this would be the phone that I would use as my daily driver. Um, I'm not a huge fan of having two devices, but I do really like living in a world, even if it's a pandemic, where I've got two devices in one because the front display of this device is large enough to service basically all regular needs. And then when I want the tablet, I'm in tablet mode and it's that simple. Uh, it doesn't get much better than this. Now, uh, people may not like the feel of the display because it isn't true glass, even though Samsung will tell you it is. And I get that completely. I understand. Uh, they may not like that they have no pen input. Uh, I get that also. They may not like that you can't really clean the uh, pre-installed screen protector that's on the inside of this device, the Z Fold 2. I get that too. Uh, it's one of those trade-offs you got to be willing to make. Uh, this is the no compromise phone. This is the compromise, but you're living in a new era of technology phone. 
Uh, a lot of people are disturbed by the crease. I'm not disturbed by it. Um, uh, it. To me, it's become second nature. That sounds odd when you repeat it, right? The crease has become second nature. But I can't see myself going back after using a device like this, knowing that this technology exists, knowing that I can have two devices in one, don't really need a tablet. Yes, I have a Tab S7 Plus. Let's not get started on that. But that's what it really boils down to is that this for me represents two devices in the form of one. That's why the $2,000 price tag is something I can digest. Here, we're still just getting a single phone. Yes, it's the biggest, it's the best, uh, best specifications, best overall experience, best pen input of any device of its kind, best cameras of any device of its kind. But ultimately, it's just another candy bar, isn't it? And so for me, that's where the difference comes into play. That's where this becomes the phone to own that I want, that can do it all. I wish that this did have better cameras, not because I need them, but because at $2,000, Samsung really has no good excuse for not giving us that camera module, um, but I can live with it. And there will be a third generation. I talked about it in my full review of this phone. Uh, and there's gonna be possibly a roll, a Samsung roll. They like to make fun of fat people um, or pe you know, fat people's folds and rolls. Uh, I mentioned I think it's an ESL thing. I'm going to continue to say I think it's an ESL thing. They need to come up with better names. The fold was fine, but once you start putting out the roll, what's next? The cellulite, uh, the stretch mark, it's just we're not headed in the right direction. And I'm not being literal, but when you think about it, it's, uh, it's kind of chemical. So, um, again, in short order, uh, these are both fantastic devices. You will not be upset with either one of them, but one of them is a go everywhere, which is that Note 20 Ultra. The other, the Z Fold 2, is really a luxury device that isn't to go everywhere. You can take it everywhere, but you may break it everywhere. So, and that's not because it isn't built well, it's because when's the last time you had a phone that was not IP68 rated? And if you don't know what that means, I'm just talking about water and dust resistance. So if it's raining outside and this thing gets wet, I'm not saying it'll break, but it could be the beginning of internal damage. This, nothing's gonna happen. You drop this in the toilet, God help you, I don't want to use it. I hope you don't want to use it either, but I've seen plenty of people drop phones in the toilets and use them because they don't really have any other options. Um, I don't think insurance covers that unless you break the phone, right? And it's not just because it's no longer sanitary. But if you drop it in a pool, uh, fresh water of any form, it's not going to break unless it hits something that cracks it, you know? Um, this, it's done. It's cooked. It's finished. It's over. Uh, don't like that we don't have expandable storage here, but I can live with it because, again, it's changed the way I use my phone. Here, having expandable storage is nice, but they screwed us on the base internal storage at 128 when the base of the Note 10 Plus was 256. So, no thanks, Samsung. You didn't do us any favors. Uh, both are beautiful, but, again, um, the overall looks and coolness absolutely goes to the Fold. I mean, the Fold folds. Um, the Z hinge that now allows you to posture it in different ways, that's another big win. I mean, the fact that you can do this, it's relevant. Previous generation, open or closed, all or none. Here, we have flexibility on a fold. And that, of course, was introduced with the Z Flip. That is uh, part of the reason that I prefer it. Uh, so, Meaning this device is because it does have that same hinge. It's a better hinge than the first generation. The first gen had a lot going for it, but it was really just the first phone of its kind. Here we have a fleshed out product that I wish is what we got in Gen 1. I would have owned Gen 1 of the Fold if it had been like this. Uh, but now here I am owning the second gen. So that tells you everything that, I need, that you need to know, uh, at least about my opinion. The biggest fault or flaw of this device, other than the inability to expand the storage and the fact that they should have given it a half terabyte of storage internally like the first gen fold and they should have given it best in class cameras just like the note 20 ultra they shouldn't have downgraded anything because this is the most high-end top of the line phone that samsung or anyone else on earth manufactures uh, is that they should have better case options i mean holy shit how we don't have better case options for a device like this I cannot tell you. It doesn't make any sense at all. This little piece of junk I had to order from the UK for over $70 just so I could have a kickstand and all the 3D, uh, 3D printed dreck that's on Amazon, I wouldn't wish on any of you. Now, when it comes to the Note 20, that's when you're reminded you have a traditional flagship that they know is selling 
tens of millions of, of units. And so there are tens of millions of cases. And I've covered uh, cases from Ghost Tech, Poetic. There are so many different cases, Otterbox, uh, so many manufacturers that are reputable that you can pick up for this. Uh, when it comes to screen protection, I've covered Whitestone Dome extensively, both their e-jig and traditional glass screen protection. Those are all a must. Here, the only thing you can get is screen protection for the exterior, nothing for the interior. That's pretty much my biggest gripe with the experience with the Z Fold 2. Otherwise, call quality on both of these is excellent. Um, your overall experience is going to be pretty much identical because of the same processor, same uh, Snapdragon, Qualcomm, CPU, same GPU, same amount of RAM, uh, almost the same amount of internal storage. Again, storage uh, gets a win here because you do have expandability. Uh, cameras are better here, pen inputs better here, IP68 rating is better here, but uh, when it comes to having that large form factor display, can't beat 120 hertz in a larger form factor, a real large form factor, not just a vertical uh, stretch. And that's what I feel like, you know, the Note has continued to become, just this longer and longer device, and that's why it's even taller than the Z Fold 2. Um, unruly, it, it also got wider, but it's just, you know, how strange can we make the aspect ratio? So the fact that the heavier Z Fold 2 is the more palm-friendly phone is yet another reason I prefer it. Uh, and then when the opportunity arises that I really want to make this the larger device, I can. Here, I'm stuck with this one form factor. And that's not a bad thing. If you have really large hands, you're fine. Uh, but if you don't, you're kind of up the creek. And then when it comes to cameras, I've mentioned I wish that we had the same camera module from the Note 20 Ultra, but anyone who follows my channel knows I'm a camera guy, camera person, whatever. I don't need it. Would I like to have the 8K here that exists in the Note 20? Sure, I wish. Uh, would I like to have the larger sensor that lives in the medium format uh, sensor lens pairing on this? Yes. But I'm okay with the fact that I don't. And the 64 megapixel, uh, megapixel sensor here is bullshit anyway. Um, cramming all of those megapixels into a tiny sensor is nonsense. Um, that's something that was a fad years ago that died years ago. Here's a reason Sony's 1-inch 20 megapixel sensor has stayed so relevant uh, for nearly a decade. And that's because you, you don't need to see how many megapixels you can cram into a sensor. Unless you get up into the full frame realm, then you have a better argument. But in the cell phone world, smartphones, no, sorry, that's a, it's just a load of crap. So at the end of the day, budget and practicality should make your decision. Um, I mean, I think the Z Fold is cooler every single day of the week, but from a budget and practicality standpoint, it's not. And again, I don't expect everyone out there to have a secondary phone to take to the beach or to a pool or to the water park, amusement park, whatever, anywhere once we're not in a pandemic, which hopefully will be sometime in 2021. I hope it's not the summer, but that's what it looks like. That's when things will get close to being normal again, uh, as normal as they can be because we're not much of a normal world to begin with, at least half of the population here in the States, um, but that votes at least. But yeah, this is really, um, you know, you're not going to screw up picking either one of these. They're both fantastic. And that's why I'm giving you an update because I've spent enough time with this now to tell you what I love and hate about each phone. And at the end of the day, neither excels in battery life. Um, they're both so, so neither excels in quick charging. They're both limited to 25 Watts. And again, the same hardware basically through and through, except when it comes to waterproofing, pen input, and of course the cameras. So, uh, for me, having the folding two in one is more important than those. Uh, I'm not missing anything else that the note has to offer really, except for the pen input. Cause I could live without the cameras anyway. I mean, I review cameras. So, but if you're someone who doesn't own a camera, then I can start to make the argument, get the phone that has the better camera, because that is your camera. That's your primary camera. That's what you're going to use for vlogging, for taking pictures with family when you can. Again, please try not to spread COVID, please. And because um, God knows we're doing a good enough job without trying. And by not trying, I mean not doing anything to prevent the spread. So, yeah, that, that's what it comes down to. If this is going to be your only camera, get the phone with a better camera. That should be a given. On the other hand, if you have a dedicated camera, get the phone that's the better phone, and that is the Z Fold uh, in terms of innovation, not in terms of just being a better phone. Again, when it comes to call quality, speakerphone quality, 
uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, these are both even keel. They're on the same page, same hardware. Different form factor, different attractiveness, uh, but ultimately for me, the decision again is fairly simple. The Z Fold 2 wins every day of the week. Uh, it's just a more versatile device. But I'll tell you right now, when I'm walking my dog, playing with my dog, something that is pandemic friendly, all 80 pounds of that Labrador goodness, I'm kind of worried about having this in my pocket because if he, you know, if I'm uh, playing with him and I take a spill, which has happened, just like he takes a lot of spills also, this might break. Um, a phone like this in my pocket, I'm a lot less worried. So take that into account. This is the realistic every person phone, you know, the one size fits all. This is that luxury good device that it's a matter of not just whether you can pay for one, but whether or not you can stomach it. Um, Gen 1 of the Fold, I was afraid to take outside. Uh, the Z Flip, that broke that streak and really got me to a level of comfort where I was totally comfortable taking this phone outside. Now, it just happens to be a creepy coincidence that we're in a pandemic, so I'm not going anywhere anyway, so I don't have to worry about going out with the Z Fold 2 too much, right? Stupid, strange, creepy, all those things. But, uh, you know, if we were living in a normal world, uh, like I said, I was already going out uh, daily with this guy, the little flip. So I was already prepared for living with the idea of going back in time to pre-IP68, you know, no water resistance, no dust resistance. Treat the phone like a baby. Yes, I had gone back to that. And by baby, I don't mean a human baby or any living baby. I just mean babying it. It's an expression, not a reality. Um, so I wasn't swaddling it and wrapping, you know, cuddling it and no coochie coo, you know, just make sure I don't drop it, which is what I do with all my phones. Make sure it doesn't get wet. That's the new thing. Make sure you don't put it in a pocket that you've put something else in that pocket that may leave residual crap that could in turn destroy this but wouldn't really do anything to this. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The Z Fold 2 is the winner, but not out of practicality. It's out of innovation and technological advancement. It is the epitome of phones right now and where phones are headed, even if it is to the fat roll rather than the fat fold. That is the next step. The Note, on the other hand, I mean, the fact that it may be the last gen of the Note kind of tells you everything, right? I mean, if Samsung is truly uh, just integrating the S Pen into all of their Galaxy devices, and this is the last dedicated Note device we see, then that tells you right there a lot about what I haven't been talking about, but what Samsung is doing that reflects what I'm talking about. And that pretty much sums things up, folks. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.